For more, I'm joined on set by our international affairs editor, Philip Turl. Philip, hello. What impact do you think, if any, are these opposition protests going to have? Let's say this is a fly in the ointment for Vladimir Putin because what he really wants is this election to be a consolidation of his mandate and support for him to spend another six years in power. But when push comes to shove, Alison, it doesn't really matter if there's an election today or not because it's so in completely rigged uh, with uh, the ballots being vetted by uh, all the scores being uh, given uh, that it's hard to believe in. They could even say there was a 100% turnout rate and a 100% approval rating for Vladimir Putin. Uh, we don't really know what the real uh, reason for, for all of this is and, and what the real uh, tally is. So I think... Uh, these protests, especially the ones in Russia itself across these 17 cities, uh, have to be taken into account. The people who are doing this, they really do face a very hard uh, period afterwards. Uh, for example, they can go to jail. Uh, it's not only the people taking part in the protests, those who've uh, scribbled names on ballot papers, like, for example, Stop the War in Ukraine, or have poured uh, paint into a ballot box. It's not only them who are facing uh, problems, but uh, their family too. They can lose their jobs, uh, their husbands or their wives, their children can be refused uh, places at university, and even their uh, very young children can be refused a place uh, uh, at a kindergarten. So uh, the, the pressure, the uh, persecution on anybody who goes against the regime is so intense in Russia. I think you have to really uh, take your hat off to all those who have been brave enough to go out today to actually stand up and uh, criticise the regime and say that they're voting for somebody else who's not Vladimir Putin, even if that person has no chance of winning and in the long run would also support Vladimir Putin. Um, so I think... There's not going to be any impact, that's that's for sure. Uh, but the image is there and the image is telling another story, especially when you see these protests in Berlin uh, with uh, Ulia uh, Navalny, the wife of Alexei Navalny, and also here in Paris today and also in London. Uh, this is something that the Kremlin didn't want to see and probably something that won't be shown on Russian state television. Yeah, it's certainly having a symbolic impact, at least. Uh, though, Philip, as you said, there's no doubt Vladimir Putin is going to be in power for another six years. How are we going to be feeling that uh, here in Europe? It's very unclear what the first manoeuvre of Vladimir Putin is going to be, but I think this is going to be for him an occasion to uh, show his force once again. He's got a new mandate, that's what he's after. For him, it's a consolidation of his power, and therefore he will feel more invigorated to push ahead with the war in Ukraine. So this is not good news really for uh, for the Europeans or for the Americans or for the West in general. The fact that Vladimir Putin will feel um, in a stronger position now that he's won another six-year mandate. So we're not going to see any let-up in the war in Ukraine. We're not going to see any, I don't think, uh, process of any kind of negotiation going on to try to fa find a way out of this war. Uh, you have to remember that both sides are stuck on their positions. Uh, the Russians say they're willing to come to the negotiating table, but only under their conditions. Uh, the Ukrainians say they're not going to discuss anything with the Russians, which doesn't entail a complete pullout of all the positions that it occupies within Ukraine. Uh, there are some in France calling for negotiations. Emmanuel Macron is, on the, on the other hand, saying that we should be preparing ourselves possibly for the sending of uh, NATO forces into Ukraine to help the Ukrainians. It's unclear what role those NATO forces would be uh, playing if and when they go into Ukraine. So we're in a very uncertain period right now. We're in a very difficult period where anything could happen. And we basically, no one in the West knows what is going to happen next, apart from the fact that Ukraine is going to carry on fighting. And while they don't have the right ammunition, uh, they don't have the right amount of money coming into the country to help with the war effort, then I don't really think we're going to see a change. And this is going to uh, give Russia uh, more of just to try to make further advances in Ukraine uh, while it sees Europe as being so split on what action to take.